Okay, here's the main character of our wreath tonight. Isn't he adorable? He's holding a gold four-leaf clover. He's got a little uh, three-leaf three leaf clover, three leaf clover, I'm sorry, and a three leaf clo clover on his um, noggin there. And he's embellished in gold. So, and he's got like his velour body. He's so pretty. Hi, Maria. Well, hi, Miss Ponce Voskis. Oh, well, thank you, Sharon. Welcome. I'm glad you got to make it. Welcome, welcome. Hi, guys. Okay, so this little guy measures about 13 inches long. We're going to be using, this is a 14-inch elevated wreath form. Um, this is a wreath form that I took, and I put the ties on it myself. These is what I call garland ties. I buy them in a roll and cut them myself. I cut them at um, 13 inches. There's 25 feet in a row when you buy it, okay? And um, I put six ties in the center tonight, one in each bracket, and I put 10 going around the outside. I link them between the first and the, um, the, the middle ring, because this one's only got three rings going around it, and then I just bend them over place one, bend it over, place one, and you can end up with 10 ties going around the outside, okay? So we're gonna start by opening all of our ties up on the outside of our frame. Well, you're welcome, Sharon. I'm gonna open all of these up. And we're gonna be doing two different methods tonight. And we're gonna be using three different meshes. So the colors of our mesh is going to be a metallic white and green. We're gonna use a black with a gold border on it. And then we're just gonna use a um, metallic um, green. This is a wide full metallic green, okay? So the first round that we're gonna put in, hi Jody. We're going to put in um, just some messy ruffles, okay? Oh, good. And um, I'm just going to curl it a couple of times. I'm going to stretch it out, and I'm just going to curl it a couple of times. And then I'm just going to walk my fingers up the center of it, okay? Walk it up the center of it. And you get like a messy ruffle. It's not a real pretty ruffle. Okay, and I'm going to actually put the curls down on this one where I rolled it under, and I'm just going to tie it real tight, and just twist it once, okay, and I'm just going to place it going around the ring of it. So let me show you here on the go. Let me stretch this out so you can see it a little bit so I get my rock right there. All I'm doing is doing a curl here. Okay, rolling it under a couple of times. Then I take this end and I roll it under a couple of times. And then I just take, I hold it right here. You can hold it a little taut. And then I just walk these fingers up the center. Some people do them across their chest. I don't, I'm not coordinated enough. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> So I'm just going to put this one, so I'm just going around it and alternating it, okay? And I'm sort of going to just butt these up right here. And we'll do the same thing with um, this um, green and white metallic. And just walk it up the center. So what's everyone been up to besides um, getting stuff for the holidays? We had so much food. We had so, a nice company with a couple that lives down the lane from us. They were home alone and we were home alone. So we shared um, our Christmas together. I cut these pieces right here 
to 22 inches. These are just cut to 22 inches. And this is being used basically as like a filler to make sure there's no gaps going around. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to the next step on this wreath. going to go ahead up here put this green one in tie it down okay just like so just like we've been doing on the bottom let's go ahead and open all of these up I just like to open them up it's easier to get things in them when I'm making my little round so there's just six on the top um, for each bracket Michelle, how have you been? Put that in there. It's already looking like St. Patty's Day. All the golds and greens. Hello, Miss Barnes. Hi, Mary. Just doing messy ruffles. The mesh was cut to 22 inches. Being, I'm using it mainly as a filler mesh. 14 inch elevated wreath frame. And I put the gold ties on it myself. They didn't come. I use what's called garland rope. It comes in 25 foot feet and I cut my pieces to um, 13 inches. Okay, here we go. Just curling it a couple of times on each end from El Paso. Well, welcome. I lived in Carlsbad. Well, hello, Connie. I lived in Carlsbad, New Mexico for many a year. 
We have some really good friends that live in Santa Teresa. So welcome. Oh, Connie, no way. Oh, well, I hope he's fine. And it's not that. I hope it's just a virus or something. That stuff, that new, I guess, is running pretty rampant. A lot of stuff out there right now, though. The weather, I tell you, it's either cold or it's hot. <laughs> Oh, well, you're welcome, Sharon. Thank you. This is a very sweet compliment. And don't mind asking any questions. You know, we all start somewhere when we're crafting, making wreaths, and I don't mind it whatsoever. I will be releasing um, two wreath kits here in the next uh, week. I will be releasing a um, Easter kit and a spring kit. And I'm gonna tell you guys, they're gorgeous. So I'll put some notices out. Okay, so here's our filler. Just messy ruffles all the way around, okay? Loving these colors, guys. Loving the colors. Okay. So what we're going to do next to this, and the reason we only put 22 ties in it, it's not like, oh, that's okay. Oh, no. I wouldn't either, Connie. We're going to be doing curls. Guys, you in the wreathing community, curls used to be the thing and they're making a comeback. People sort of gotten away from doing curls and curl bundles because they take a little while to make. So I made some up in advance, but I'm gonna show y'all how I do it. That's okay, Miss Ashley. Oh, you're too sweet. Okay, so we're gonna take one. These are cut to 10 inch pieces, just 10 inch. You can cut them longer if you want to. I find 10 inches is good. So I just curl in it and curl in it. I'm not quite curling it like a little skinny taquita, but not real fat like a burrito. It's sort of in between, okay? And I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna clip it. And this, the seam of it, I want down. The seam I want down. And then I'm gonna take the black one and I'm gonna do it the same. I'm just curling it over and I'm gonna get another clip. Here it is. And I'm gonna clip it with the seam to the back and I'm gonna lay it right there by um, my other one. Now I'm curling my third one, okay? And I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna stick it in my thumb and I'm gonna hold it. So what I'm gonna do is lay the green one down. I'm gonna take this black one, the seams down on the green one, the seams gonna go down, and I'm just making an X out of it, okay? Now I'm gonna come in with this one and I'm gonna put it catty cornered that X. And if you can see, there is an opening right through here. And if I sort of squish this together in the middle and hold it, I'm catching all of them. There's two ways you can do this. You can use a zip tie or you can use a, um, like a half of a, or a quarter of a pipe cleaner. I like to use a zip tie. I'm just putting it right up under it these are six inch zip ties I get, and I get them by the thousand on um, Amazon, and I haven't ordered in quite a while. Then I take my needle nose just to make sure I've got it tight, okay? And then I clip it off, 
flip the edge of the, um, and there you've got a curl bundle. So when we put it in, okay? Let's do that one more time and we'll start putting them in. So just roll it. I just start rolling it. I take a clip and I'm clipping it with the seam on the back side. You love curls and poofs? I do too, I love poofs. Good. And here we go again. They, they make your wreath look unique. It just gives it a, another element of texture to it. Okay, so I've got a green one. I've got a black one. And I had just been alternating them. It really doesn't matter. You can do this with just two of them. You don't always have to add a third one. And now I'm gonna lay this one in between them. I'm going to smush it in the middle. I'm gonna take me another zip tie. Oops, let go of that one. And I'm just gonna bring this up here If they're not all the same length, why they're right here in your deal, you can pull, but it doesn't matter, you know. Crafting, there's nothing perfect. There's nothing that's perfect. And I just pull them tight, and I'm gonna clip it, okay? I like to start on the outside, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is where I split these, I'm gonna come in here, Put them down in, okay, and I'm just going to tie them down tight and give it a twist. And then you can just fluff that up and see that the, the, the thing is, is I was able to get 16 bundles of curls at 10 inches a piece and still have 22 inches to cut to make the messy ruffles to go around the bottom. So that's what determined how long I made this on the bottom, is what I had left, okay? So I made a big old basket full. So now we're just gonna go around, we're gonna take them, and we're just gonna put one in each deal. And I just tie them in, push them up, because we still got ribbon to go in, guys. You can do curls just by themselves with not having to put any of the messy ruffles around, but you use more curls sometimes, which I could have done it all curls, but I like sort of having that other base there. Oh, well, thank you. And you'll see, it just sort of gives it a different look. And like I said, it adds, adds dimension. And it makes your wreath real fluffy. And I, um, even when I'm just crafting here at home, I'll get all of my curls and stuff made up. Oh, well, you go, girl. You come into my house next, right, Connie? I actually did the same thing. I'm gonna go live. Let me do that tomorrow. Um, go live and show y'all what I've done to my craft room and sort of explain um, what I'm actually um, have got going on when I've done my um, deal. Yes, it's a job. <laughs> but you know, I actually was able, I bought another uh, rack, it's not a ribbon rack or anything. 
I bought another rack and um, was able to have all of my seasonal ribbon out at one time for the first time ever. First time ever. And it sort of it relieved a lot of stress because I was getting to where I really didn't know what I had. You know, you think, but then you don't really know. <laughs> So you buy something you've already got. Okay. See, that was really fast. They're pre-made. We've already gone around the whole outside of this wreath. So now let's lay some down on the inside. And I actually put my, um, where I cut the zip tie off, mine is actually on the the inside, not on the bottom. I find that if I put it underneath, like where I'm gonna tie them in, this stays a little sharp, and um, it catches on the mesh if I've already got mesh down there. Come here, you little darling. Isn't that pretty? No, I'll be putting ribbon tails in too. But you could. You could leave it like this. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could leave it like this. But we're going to put in some ribbon tails also. Oh, yeah, I love ribbon. Oh, <laughs> So we're going to have some ribbon, a couple of more left here, yay. Tie it down good. So what is y'all's favorite wreath to make? What method is y'all's favorite? Oh, thank you. Yes, it's going to be very full. Very full. Okay, the last set going in. Last set. So see, with laying down those little uh, messy, cur uh, messy ruffles, it just made sure that I didn't have anything peeking through. So see how full it is? You can't see through it around the outside of it. It's just very, very full. Yes, yes, I love to do that and use uh, one and a half inch ribbons. Yeah, thank you. You like ruffles? Oh, Connie, that don't sound good. I'm going to get rid of our basket, guys. Set it down. So let's take a glimpse at what he's going to... He's going to look beautiful up there, isn't he? Isn't he going to look adorable? I love it. Oh. Thanks, guys. Okay. Here comes the ribbon. So my ribbon choices, and I'm an oddball when it comes to ribbon. I'm going to use one two and a half inch and two one and a half inch in each tie, okay? We're gonna use this adorable St. Patty's ribbon, and it's got glitter in the, uh, in the clovers, and it's got little hats on it, guys. I love it. We're also going to be using a gold, a metallic gold ribbon. And now we're gonna throw in some glittered black and white check. This is the only one and a half inch that we're gonna be using, okay? Yeah, 
I love to do one and a half inch on them. And, because, you know, the mesh is the mesh and you want it to shine too. So I'm just going to lay the gold right there. And I cut these ribbons to 12 inches. I cut them just to 12 inches, guys. And I'm going to lay this right on top of it. Okay. I'm just going to fold it in the center. Make me a little crease. Depending on how you like to do it, you split it back open. Okay, you can either come in here, like with your finger, and squish it all together to make it, or you can come and you can just ruffle it together, like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to find a tie, and I'm going to put it down in there. And I'm just going to take these ties, and I'm just going to curl them backwards, because they're pretty, they're gold. So I just took it and curled it backwards, okay? So then I'm just gonna take this ribbon and I'm just gonna spread it out. You can, I like to, when I've got three and I got two, two and a halves, I like to sort of just keep them coordinated. And it's going to look something like that. If I can get it to where you can see it. Good. And we're just going to go around and do it. Or 14. Yeah. You like the green? Um, when I go to decide the length of my ruffle, I mean the re length of my ribbon is, it's, I usually decide on, um, the, one, the size of the wreath form. And two, how much of the um, mesh I want to show. Okay? So the longer you cut your ribbon, the more your mesh is going to hang over your, um, I mean, the more your ribbon is going to hang over your mesh. Okay? If you're working with a 15 or higher, I would probably use 13 or 14 inch, um, cut my ribbons. If I'm working with a 14 inch or smaller, I use 12 inch. If I'm using only um, one and a half inch ribbons, I seem to just cut them at 12 inches because for some reason, it seems like they always look nice, and the reason I'm doing it is because I want the, um, the, to, the mesh to show. Then you've also got to think about the ribbons you're using and the cost of your ribbons, okay? See, these ribbons are plenty long. They go all the way out to the tips of where your mesh is which is perfectly fine. If this was a bigger frame, it would push this out about another inch, your mesh. So your ribbons might be a little shorter and you might need to cut them a little longer. Hi, Stacy. Hi, KP. How is the group doing, guys? Haven't seen you two. Y'all been busy, busy? And I hope that explanation helps. Sometimes I get twisted, oh, Sharon. And sometimes people just cut them what length they want to because that's what they like. Or maybe that's the, the way that they've made their signature on the wreaths that they make. And that's the way their customers like them too. So you've always, you know, got that in the back of your mind when you're making a wreath. When I first started, I cut most of my ribbons nearly all the time to 12 inches. Good? Great.
And my normal for just about any wreath um, is 13 inches. But I wanted to make sure that more of the mesh showed with this one, and which it's going to because of the curls. Good, thank you. When I put this bundle of ribbons together, I alternated um, the, the St. Patrick ribbon and the gold ribbon. So one will be on top and then the other one will be on top going around. So you'll still have the three ribbons, but they, they all won't be coordinated in certain pattern. Last ribbon going around the bottom here, guys. straight down in here, folded them in half, just like I've been doing, okay? And on these, I'm just gonna trim that off a little bit because it's a little long. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna spread these out a little bit more, okay? Sort of like this on this side. Then I'm gonna sort of come this way, and I'm gonna, pull the two and a half inch, going the opposite way. And it's gonna make it look sort of like a flower. There we go. You know, I was looking for a compliment there, Kathy. Okay, Rita, no problem, doll. You know you can always catch me on Saturday nights. Put them in the center. Ruffle them up the middle. Let's go straight down in there. little long have to get it to where I can pull it <laughs> then I get it this way
We got the last set of ribbons going in. Man, this one's going to shine, 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 isn't it? Oh, thanks. So what's everyone doing for New Year's? Hanging around the house or I'll probably be asleep. Now New Year's Day we gotta have our black eyed peas and cornbread, of course. But um I'm not one for bringing it in past my bedtime. I say that and I'll be in the bedroom reading. Okay, that's all of our ribbons, and that's what we've got so far. Isn't that adorable? It screams St. Patty's Day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. There we go. Okay, so see with our gnome setting up here. Oh, he's going to look gorgeous with his little gold. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a blessing. So, let's make a bow. Then we'll put the bow and the gnome on. Okay. So what I did is I'm going to add two ribbons to our three. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take this black and white check and we're going to put it at the back. Okay? So I'm not going to make um, big tails, but I, we're going to have some bigger loops. So I'm going to come out here to the 8 inch. And right here on top of the eight, I use an easy bow deluxe. So if anyone's in need of a, hi Cheryl, aw, thanks, uh, bow maker. I have some in my shop. Just got a new shipment in. I'm gonna put it down in. Gonna take it, squish it together, and I'm gonna twist it. You can actually ruffle it together before you put it down in here. I like to have lots of ribbon out, and then you just take it. Flip it over. I'm gonna come out here to the seven, okay? I'm gonna take it, twist it. I'm gonna move this in up here at the top. I'm gonna come over here to the seven, push it down in here. You can use your hand. And I'm gonna put it all the way down in, okay? But on the, the uh, tails coming towards me, Let's just leave them just a little bit longer, okay? Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Let me get this rolled up. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, this is a live, this is live, doll. Well, hello, Juju. That's fine. You're never late for the party. You are the party. Hi, Karen. Uh, yeah, I'm live. You never know sometimes, huh? Okay. So I've done this. Now I'm going to bring in just a solid darker green. This is almost like a forest green. Okay, I'm going to make it a little longer. I'm going to twist it, bring it down towards me. I'm going to come out here, and I'm going to put this one about at the six mark. Six, six and a half. Yeah, about six and a half here. This one the same way. This one will go up and down, and then we're going to pull this tail to the top and cut it off. I 
Oh, yes. We had a very nice uh, Christmas. And so, and we'll be stilled home come New Year. My little doggie's got to have surgery Thursday. And uh, so he might not have a very merry, happy New Year, but we will. And thank you. Okay. So now let's go ahead. Drum row. And let's put some gold in it. Put some gold light out right over that green. About a seven, seven and a half, eight. This one's going to go up. These will probably way too long. I'll probably end up trimming them off. Okay. We're going to make a loop and we're going to come down to about the five inch. We're going to twist it. We're going to come over here to about the five inch. Push it down in there. And we're going to pull this one out in front of us. And about the same length as the other one. Cut it off. Oh, he's got a little... Um, area in his little groin that needs to be, they biopsied it and now he needs to, they're going to remove it and while he's there, he's got under anesthesia, they're going to go ahead and clean his little chopper and stuff. Okay, so now let's bring in some glittered black, solid black. Aw, oh, thanks. Hi, Flo. Oh, Flo, you're so sweet. Okay. So this time we're going to come down. We're going to twist it. Pull out lots of ribbon. We're going to come down to about the four. Twist it. Make this and hang out down here. We're gonna make this one. Poke it down in there, hang out up there, along with its tail. So what I've actually done is come down an inch each time, and I've just repeated the type and just moved it up or down. Thank you. Roll and roll and roll. But it works better when you make a bow if you have a lot of ribbon out. I know it seems. So now let's put our really pretty leprechaun ribbon on the top. And it'll sort of bring the black to the top with this black. It's going to pick up the black here. It's going to pick up the green from here. But it's also going to pick up the gold because of the glitter in the center. Okay. So this one is going to go up. And this one, we're gonna do it about a three right there. Add them away. Three. Bring it down. This one is sort of going to go up and down. We're going to bring that one down. And that's our little bow. There it is, it's a little tiny pin. Okay. So I've got some green pipe cleaners and I'm gonna take two of them. I'm going to tie them together. Thank you. I'm gonna tie them together. And tie them and tie them and tie them. <laughs> 
yank. I go ahead and bend this to get it ready. Okay, I'm gonna put my finger on the peg and I'm just gonna lift up my ribbons because I really push them down in there tight. I'm gonna take my middle finger and my pointer finger and I'm just going to put it on top. It looks a little bigger, get that fixed, okay? And I'm just going to pull it off and you can see how my hands are. See how my fingers are curved but my thumb is on the top? That's just extra security. I'm not pinching it tight. I'm just barely lightly holding it. And putting this right down where those pegs were, where they have that indention, and seeing I've got them right between my fingers. I take these two and I pull down, and I'm gonna take them and pull them real tight. Go down in here, twist, and then I'm gonna come over here and twist my bow. And when I twist the bow and hold the pipe cleaner, it tightens the, the um, wire up, okay? I'm just putting these, everything's already basically fluffed. You just have to, to make sure they're where they're at. It's fluffed and, they're, and it's where it should go. I'm just making sure these tails, then I'm gonna turn it around the other way for the tails. Okay, and now we got us a pretty little bow. Okay, let's bring our wreath back over. And Let's get him ready to attach. So I've got two pipe cleaners. So what I'm going to do is up here on the back of his little noggin, I'm gonna put a pipe cleaner there and one down here on his booty. So what I'm gonna do is use an ice pick. Hi Sally, hi Janie. Uh, excuse me. Yes, great and wonderful Christmas, yes ma'am. So this is like an ass pick, it's an awl. You can pick them up at Walmart in their sewing section. All I'm gonna do is poke a hole. Then I'm gonna take this pipe cleaner and I'm just gonna run it to the other side. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna twist it a couple of times Okay, I did, he had a colonoscopy. I gave him a colonoscopy earlier today and I sewed his little bum up. So I'm gonna go right back here in the middle because he was very heavy and he was full of uh, rocks. So he needed to have a colonoscopy. So okay, same way there. I just poked a hoe. Okay. Put my all up. And I'm sort of gonna see if I can get him like in the middle up here. Cause I've got a couple of other things that I want to, I don't want that to go. Yeah, that looks good. So what I'm gonna take is a weaving needle. Thank you. <laughs> I just have to tell it what it is. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Shirley. <laughs> so this is a longer awl. Uh, awl. <laughs> this is a longer knitting needle. You can get some that's just a little shorter. I use both sides, sizes um, at Walmart or you can order them off of Amazon. Um, they're to sew two pieces of either knitting or crocheted or anything like that together. Okay, so all I'm doing is feeling on the underside with my hands to make sure that I'm, I'm close to the um, frame so that I can make sure I tie this off to the frame. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Get it on the frame like I want it. My fingers are chubby. Okay. Pull that ribbon out. Because I want to. I'm just going to tie this down. I'm not pulling it tight down into the mesh or anything. The one that I want a little tire, tighter will be his um, bottom. Come here, darling. And I'm just putting them both on there at the same time. And I bend them over. Oh, good. You know, I love these weaving needles and stuff. And, you know, you'll learn that there are certain signs when you go to look at them or you go to look and see what they're made out of. MDF is real heavy um, of a sign to buy to put on a, a wreath unless you're using it like on a grapevine or something. Pick it up and feel of it. Because the heavier your sign, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up either having to pull so hard it sinks down into the mesh, or it, um, I'm going to push his little bottom down a little bit more so he looks a little evener, um, just makes it sag and want to fall off of your reef. But grapevines are really good and they work okay on evergreens, heavier signs but not so much on a mesh sign. Okay. His little hat, his little noggin up here bends. I think I want to make it a little crookeder. Okay. Well, let's just pull that ribbon out. It sort of got out from under him. It's okay. Okay. Now we're going to put the bow then I'll trim the ribbons. I got longer tails going this way. We've got a lot of real estate up here at the top. So I want the bow up here. So I can use those a little bit longer tails. You could have made one that had longer tails instead of um, shorter ones at the top and at the bottom. I just don't look at a um, St. Patty's Day wreath and sort of see long frilly tails. Yeah, I'll show you right here. Okay, what I do is I take <clears throat> two loops and I sort of jiggle them around so that I can get it where I want it and make sure that I'm not laying it on uh, any of my um, loops, okay? So what I've actually done, I hope you can see this. Now I'm gonna pull this out. So when I go in at both of them, they're both on the same, the same wire right here. I don't want it that way. So I take one and go under the, the um, rail to where I have one on one and one on the other. What we've got here though, what's nice, is we've got a crossbar. And that doesn't happen very often and you can plan and plan it. So then you take these two, okay? And I wanna make sure that I'm not pulling, that's about right, right there. I'm gonna take these two and then I'm just gonna twist it to tie it on. And then what I do, usually when I get off the live, I go around and I twist it around and around the bar. Okay, so many times and then I'll, I'll cut it off. Okay, then I just turn it back over and you're just about, and that's the way I, exactly the way I did him when I took the, the um, wire to the back that's exactly the way I tied him on to the frame. Okay, so now let's fluff our little tails up. Whew. 
and chop them off. Okay, so let's dovetail these. I want them to be all different sizes. No, no problem. Let's get this green one. I always have to shake my... Okay. I'm going to cut this on a little shorter. This one, leave this one a little longer. And I should have a black one right there. I knew we had one. <laughs> Just didn't know where it got off to. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now I have, I just want to use one of these. And I want to put it right in the center. It's a little four leaf clover that is glittered. I left off a light tonight. I didn't notice. Now notice that. This light's a little darker. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to cut this stick completely off. Make sure I've got this bow exactly where I want it. And I think I want it a little crooked. I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue. I'm just going to spread this out pretty good right there. Let me hold it down for just a minute. Let it sit there, then we can do our stuff. I have a couple of little embellishments I'm gonna put on here. This is a um, little hat. Let me get this off the tag. These came from um, last year, but they came from um, Big Lots. I had to look up the sticker, okay? And of course, these are all little four-leaf clovers and it's got some little Duma Dobby stuff, okay? And I thought it would be cute to do one about right here and then maybe one up here at its head, okay? And how I'm going to do that is you see this tie that I cut off right there in the middle? I'm actually going to poke a little hole with my awl, okay, just to get it started. I'm going to put some glue on that tie that's sticking up there loud and proud. I'm gonna come down here and hold it. While I push it right up in that hole to glue it. And that way we can see it, okay? And I think that's stinking adorable. Okay. Now this one, it's a little different. It's still a hat. But it says luck. If I can get the 
And it also came from Big Lots last year. Okay, and it's got two little. But it says L, U, and um, C, K. L, whoops, bend it back. U, C, K. I don't know. I'm going to pull that off and put some glue on it. This wasn't staying on there good enough for me. There we go. So lock. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. Let me get his little head band showing. Put me a hole. Thank you. Thank you guys. And this time, I think I'll just put me a, ooh, ouch, ouch. Mm. That was hot. It came out, where'd it come out at? At the top. Well, we know it's hot. There we go. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> it just went boom off, guys. Boom off. Okay. Let me, this will be quick, <laughs> show y'all what we ended up with. <laughs> Trying that back over. So this is what we ended up with. Let me see if I can, wow, 